What does one week of training for the Centenarian Decathlon look like for this 57-year-old guy? Well, here's the 10-second condensed version. There you go, a whole week of training condensed down to 10 seconds. Now, as I work towards uh, building my fitness and maintaining my fitness, hopefully to be able to compete in that centenarian decathlon, as a 57-year-old guy here in the fall of 2022, there's some definite things that I have to take into consideration as I plan my training. So let's talk a little bit about those now, and then we'll go into a little bit, I'll give you a summary of each of those seven days and how they, uh, how they shook out. Okay, the main thing I've been focusing on here to make sure that my training can continue to be consistent on a week-to-week, month-to-month, and hopefully year-to-year -year basis is to make sure that I enter each week with specific goals. So here's the goals that I try to achieve each week in my training. First is three to five zone two sessions each week, one to two zone four to five interval sessions each week, two to three strength sessions, daily mobility and balance work, a total of at least two hours or more in zone two over the course of the week, and no back-to-back -back hard days. Now that last point is very important. I think that's where I got into trouble last year is I was not giving my body enough time to rest and I got injured and had to take a couple months off of running completely. So my goal is to make sure that I always give my body enough time to recover between a hard day. So no more back-to-back-to-back -back -back hard days. I will always put between a hard day uh, an easy or recovery day. It could be a, just a low impact, no impact, uh, aerobic training, or it could be a rest day if I'm tired. So that's the real important thing, especially as I've found that I've gotten older and I think most of you, as you get older, you will realize that too, that we just need more rest in between uh, hard uh, workouts just to make sure that our body gets rested and recovered enough so that we can efficiently take advantage of that next hard workout. Okay, here's a quick summary of uh, each of the activities in the, in the past week, and then we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that uh, once that's done. Monday for me, it's a good way to start off the week with a little strength training. Uh, the strength specific strength training exercises I'm doing now are bench press, uh, overhead press, and hex bar deadlift. And I'm following a, a specific program for each of those exercises. Uh, and I'll post links to the uh, books I use to kind of get started with those programs. Uh, essentially, it is a what's called a linear progression where I slowly, uh, week over week, start with a light weight, add weight until I can't automatically add that amount of weight the next week. And then I switched over to what is called the 5-3-1 program, which is a way to kind of slowly and consistently continue to increase strength. I've been doing it for uh, six months at this point. Uh, made a lot of progress. Still have a ways to go. All right, welcome to Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday is a zone two aerobic day. One of about three days I try to do each week as I'm coming back from my hip injury. I will do one zone five day or interval day, but the goal for the zone two days is to get in a nice easy run, uh, somewhere around 40 minutes or so in that zone two heart rate, the aerobic zone. Uh, for me, somewhere between 122 and 130. So. Uh, so just start my run now. Okay, just about halfway into the run here. About 22 minutes, average heart rate about 127. So, right on pace. This run will end up being about 45 minutes or so. Okay, done with Tuesday's run. Here are the numbers 4.65. Uh, was it 4.65 miles, 46 minutes, 10 seconds, uh, 9.56 a mile. Uh, average heart rate was around 127. Now I'll do a uh, maybe a mile or so cool down walk and uh, back at it tomorrow. Okay, welcome to uh, 
thir uh, Wednesday <laughs> down in the basement uh, riding through cartoon sequoias and dinosaurs on Zwift on the bike trainer and uh, the bike trainer is a great way to get some low impact or no impact zone 2 work in. I often will do this in between run days. Uh, yesterday was 45 minutes outside. Tomorrow uh, is intervals outside. So this is a good way to get some good aerobic work, uh, get the legs spinning without a lot of impact and pounding. I can control the effort almost perfectly on the trainer. So great way to get some work in and uh, save the legs. And uh, coming up on your left is a dinosaur. Freeze the frame and take a look at that. All right, Zwift is a great indoor riding tool. All right, back tomorrow. All right, welcome to Thursday, interval day. After yesterday's spin on the bike, zone two, today is uh, some hill sprint intervals up this hill, which is a pretty good, pretty good length. Goes down a little bit and should be enough for about a good 30 to 40 second hill sprint. So. Okay, last interval finish. All right, that one, 164. Solidly in the uh, zone five range, that's for sure. All right, time for a cool down and a better walk. See you tomorrow. Okay, uh, Friday is uh, strength day for me, and I'm doing overhead press on Fridays. Monday is bench, Friday is overhead press. Uh, same protocols with the bench press. Started off with the uh, linear progression and then moved over to the 5-3-1 program. So uh, working on that. Uh, legs are a little, a little tired after yesterday's interval runs, and after I do this, I typically, on, uh, on the day as I do shoulder press, I also do some ch uh, pull-ups and uh, chin-ups as well. Okay, that is it for upper body on Friday. A little tired, but uh, I don't get time to rest because tomorrow, Saturday, is long run day. See you then. Hey, good morning. Happy Saturday. Saturday is a uh, long run day for me. Uh, the goal today is somewhere uh, over 50 minutes at least. Uh, maybe close to an hour just depends how i feel i'm still working back from that uh, hip strain that i had about five months ago so kind of taking it easy but uh, once again zone two uh you know heart rate around 125 maybe 130 and let's see if i can do that for close to an hour like uh, upper body's a little sore from yesterday but not too bad okay Part way through the run here, about 40 minutes, 35 minutes in, uh, 3.8. Should end up around uh, six miles or so for, uh, for the run. A little humid out here today. Okay, that's the run. Uh, one hour, two minutes, 6.67 miles, average pace 9.19. So, Pretty good. Ended up going a little faster than I, a little harder than I wanted to on parts, but especially going up some of the hills. So, gotta get used to it, readjusting my effort. But good run, good run. Um, tomorrow is just kind of an easy uh, recovery run slash walk. So, 
see you Good morning. Welcome to Sunday here. Uh, doing a little dynamic stretching here. Um, today's just going to be an easy run with uh, a few walk intervals. I'll be out with a friend doing a, doing a short uh, few mile run. But uh, a little tired after yesterday's uh, long run. That was the longest I'd run in uh, six months. So, uh, building back up though. Um, so that's that's a good thing. Okay, done with the run here today. Nice easy one. Uh, what is that? Uh, 45 minutes, uh, about 3.8 miles. Uh, average heart rate was probably about 114 or 115. So nice easy run to uh, to uh, end up uh, the week. Uh, I'm gonna skip the uh, hex bar deadlift or the trap bar deadlift today um, hip is a little not hurting but a little tender after after yesterday it, it loosened up during the, during the run today so I'm just gonna take it easy um, it's kind of the important thing I've learned as I gotten older to, uh, to just pay attention and take your time recovering so that's it for now hope you found this uh, helpful kind of a typical week as I uh, go about training for that uh, centenarian decathlon Okay, there you go. Uh, one week of training for me in the fall here of 2022. I kind of mixed things up between running. I did an indoor bike. Uh, I did the, the two strength training days. I will probably add a third strength training day focusing more on uh, deadlift, either trap bar deadlift or maybe traditional deadlift once my hip is fully healed. It's getting a lot better, but I don't want to uh, stress it out too early but at least two days of strength training, mixing in uh, that easy run walk on Sunday and then that spin on Wednesday to kind of split up the, the running days and kind of introduce some low impact in between the, uh, the impact or full impact of running. Now, no matter what activity you do, you can do the same mix of activities. You don't have to run and bike. You could uh, be at treadmill, you could do elliptical, you could do swimming. Any activity that gets your heart in that zone too is perfectly fine to build that aerobic part. The strength training, you can start off with basic body weight exercises to build your initial strength and then introduce a little bit more traditional strength training to build some muscle mass and strength. But I found that to be very helpful for me over the last six months. Now the total amount of activity that I had for that last week was just shy of nine hours. Now that includes warm-up walks, uh, the, the strength training, and the running, and the cycling. And that's kind of my general goal. Uh, total activity over the course of the week, somewhere between uh, eight to ten hours right now. As I start increasing my training uh, for a race, uh, that type of thing, probably early next year, my total training will probably go up another hour or two a week as I introduce a little bit more running. But the goal is to always stay within those general guidelines of getting at least that minimum amount of zone two training, one to two interval sessions, at least two strength training sessions, and then daily mobility and balance work. If I can maintain that, I may increase the total time a little bit, but the overall percentage of zone two versus zone four versus strength should stay the same. It'll just increase in uh, total time for each of those areas. Hope you found this uh, interesting and a way maybe to give you some thing to think about as you work towards uh, planning out your training. Uh, I will be doing a video here in the next week or two on uh, some of the tools I use to plan and track my training. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and uh, click that uh, button down there to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications to uh, be notified when I do post new content. And uh, help us out, help us help other people uh, get and stay healthy by giving us a little bit of a thumbs up there. Uh, that really helps uh, YouTube find other people to bring in to uh, be aware of what we're doing here uh, on the channel. So anything you can do to help us out there would be great. And if you want to learn a little bit more why I focus so much on Zone 2 training, check out this video up here that talks about the importance of Zone 2 training and the amazing benefits that it can, that it can have in our lives. That's it for now. Until next time, thanks for watching and be well.